Ignition sequence starts. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor and check this out today is the day. Fruitionproductions.com is the website. Uh, XRP Unleashed, the, um, they're going to release the screening dates around the United States uh, today. You're going to be able to buy tickets on their website. Right now, I, I'm not sure where it'll be, but I'm assuming it'll be in their store. But go to Fruitionproductions.com. They do have a lot of their merch available now. Um, I'm thinking about getting that poster myself, having that framed. That'll be pretty neat. Um, but anyway, keep your eyes on their website today because today's the day and get your merch and you can go and buy your tickets. I'm not making any money off this. I'm just directing you to it because I'm going to be, I'm going to be going to at least one or two or three of these and I'm also going to buy some of the merch myself so i was just letting you know okay dark defender smaller time frames give distracting signals but the monthly chart there's no space left when the support resistance lines intersect the xrp run starts afterwards xrp will be unstoppable when we see the price is over the emochi cla emocho clouds or whatever you call them so this is the clouds when it gets over i guess one if it gets to 188, I guess he's saying it's unstoppable at that point. We shall see. Um, look, Ripple Swell Fireside Chat. with da Yesterday was Dan Pantera with Brad Garlinghouse. This is the uh, clip. Here's a small clip that Ripple released. This Venn diagram shows a pretty small square between the hope and the hype. Where are we now? Blockchain has so much promise that it is often overhyped that people think it'll change everything and think it'll do it overnight. It's going to change a lot of things and it's going to take decades. But I, I think the promise is really coming to fruition. But part of it is just a rising tide of opportunities is floating a lot of boats. Good stuff. Lucky for us, Rob C Cunningham was there recording in the front row. <laughs> Uh, I'll, I'll start by saying this is probably going to be a pretty informal conversation. I've had the good fortune of knowing Dan for a lot of years, uh, and so there's a, a friendly dynamic that we can talk about and uh, the industry. But first, to introduce Dan, uh, Dan has a very impressive track record and resume, uh, Goldman Sachs type of management, and then started Pantera Capital in 2013, was really the, the first in my judgment, first institution to institutional fund to set up a Bitcoin fund in 2013 when Bitcoin is about $65 uh, per coin. And uh, that means that he's now had about an 87,000% return. Ooh, and he told me backstage when we were talking about this that he's 9% away from calling it a 1,000x fund. So today, Pantera Capital has about $5 billion under management and have returned billions of dollars to uh, their investors over the years, so an incredible success story. So uh, what I want to dive into here, uh, you know, hopefully you get the sense, Dan truly is uh, amongst the original gangster crypto guys, he's uh, the original gangster. And I remember very vividly, uh, when I first got involved with crypto, Dan was organizing a conference called Pacifica. And it was a Bitcoin Pacifica. And it was to host people in the growing community. This is 2015. And I remember very vividly uh, the first time I went into this conference, I remember thinking this is a moment in Star Wars where you walk into the alien bar and people have multiple heads and I'm like, what is going on? And so I thought, uh, this is, there's some photos from this in 2015 that I dug up when we were preparing for this. And some of you, well, that's Dan on the left up there. Uh, Katie Hahn is sitting down there, and you might recognize her because she runs one of the biggest crypto funds. 
Jesse Powell from Kraken and all that, some guys from Bit Theory there, the, the whole crowd. But I, what I'd start, love to start with is asking Dan, so you started organizing the, these events. Like, what, what was your goal in kind of bringing people together so early? Uh, and I guess you know, two questions. One, your goal, but also, it, as we talked about backstage, more than almost anyone I know, you saw around the corner and you saw this trend coming. Like, talk to me about what you saw coming, what happened, and uh, what you got right. Yeah, thanks. Um, I, I think the, the way I got my head around it is um, there are protocols that move all the rest of the information around the world called the internet. But even in the 90s, Milton Friedman said we're missing an, an e cash system. And that's the way I view it as a way to move value without all these very expensive middlemen. Banks, credit card companies, title insurance companies, the shop remittance companies, so expensive. Uh, and so this seems like it's going to be kind of the final piece of the protocol puzzle that is the internet. And so I, I got excited about it. <clears throat> and it was a very fringe group back then. Uh, a lot of crazy libertarians that didn't want to take down the Fed and uh, very, very strident views. And I thought it'd be good to get a bunch of people in a room, it's actually my house, and just share views. And we had a very eclectic mix of people. Some incredible libertarians um, that were so passionate about, it, one of whom uh, renounced his US citizenship and left the United States. With Katie Hunter, it wasn't a VC then, she was a federal prosecutor. We had prosecuting crypto. Yeah, prosecuting crypto companies. Prosecuting people Ripple. really hated the government. We had a CFTC commissioner, um, a Fed economist. You know, so I want to get all this really wild group together just to kind of further the conversation to help both sides get to know each other. And, and you know, I really do think things like that are so useful to help both sides understand where they're coming from. And you know, help kind of in the blockchain happen faster than it would have otherwise. What is it? Is you obviously? I, I agree with that. By the way, bringing those groups together in those early stages, I think, helps catalyze a lot of kind of forward momentum in lots of ways. But we, if you go back before 2015 Pacifica, and I know that I think I joined the third one, so you already done it for a few years. What, what was it when you first in 2013 set up Pantera's first Bitcoin fund? What was it that you saw that made you kind of go all in on crypto so early? Well, when you have a new technology, they, they try and use an analog to the old world, like SMTP. Okay, well, that, that's an interesting clip from that. Now, let me show you something else that's going on. This is um, from Eleanor Terrett. So there's no PACER filing, and all the lawyers I've spoken to, including Ripple's general counsel, said that October 16th was the deadline. I find it really hard to believe the SEC would just let this important deadline sail by. I've reached out to the SEC and Stuart Alvarati for comment. And this this was um, in the middle, I guess in the middle of the night, last night, okay, 12, 12.28. Jeremy Hogan had weighed in on this and said, um, I'm trying to figure out how we get the time, how we got the time frame wrong. I can't see any flaw in the logic. The C was due today, and it's not showing up on the docket. If it was filed, the appeal will be dismissed, is what, what it says. Those are the factors we, uh, as we know them. Those are the facts as we know them. I'm hesitant because I haven't had a case in federal court in three years, and I have never appealed because I've always won, LOL. In any case, I'm gonna buy. I'm gonna go buy ten thousand XRP just in case we are correct, and then hit the sack. <laughs> um, okay, so that is what that is. Um, when that can you imagine this part right here? If it wasn't filed, appeal will be dismissed. That. So what we do is we put on the thumbnail appeal. Dismissed? Question mark. That is a thumbnail, my friends. Um, now check this out: It's Italy to impose 42% capital gains uh, tax on Bitcoin and crypto gains. Now, folks, I've said for a long time, all these people that think there's a lot of ways to skin a cat, and all these people that think bit oh the government can't stop Bitcoin. Yeah, all the Bitcoin maxis really care about is the Bitcoin price in the end. And if you, they could tax you at 100% capital gain, 
and then nobody would want to own it and nobody would own it because there's no incentive to own it they could strip that incentive from you these government people if they wanted to kill it they can kill it <laughs> trust me they can kill it i've said it for years okay max avery at ripple swell sheila bear former chair of the fdic and founding chair of the systemic risk company there's that phrase again systemic risk expresses optimism about blockchain despite hurdles in the u.s Monica Long, president of Ripple, asks uh, about regulatory risks. Bear highlights that blockchain disrupts legacy institutions, but urges regulators to differentiate good actors from bad ones and facilitate not obstruct innovation. Bear also notes that digital asset risks minor uh, mirror those of traditional finance. Da, da, da. Um, then says, with the challenge being to adapt existing solutions for crypto, she also praises RLUSD for enhancing the U.S. dollar's global influence by providing dollar-backed stable coins to developing nations. What she really means is by buying treasuries. One-stop one shop for business in crypto. Okay, hold on, I gotta, I gotta pause this. Okay, I had the painters knocking on the door to get in. So, by the way, if you, if you hear anything that sounds like a paintbrush, or a paint roller, or anything like that, or maybe a, an occasional drill or different things, that is because there are painters here. One-stop shop for business and crypto tokenization, custody, stable coins, payments. Um, this is Aaron Sledhall, SVP of product at Ripple. Unveil the latest product roadmap. Let's see what this little roadmap looks like. There you go. Um, let's see, we've got some other clips here. If you're in a position where you're investigating these scams, you have so much more information available to you, both individually on an individual transaction and in an aggregate basis, because the more assets are involved in investigation, the more the law enforcement is going to pursue that investigation. We can go and look at the volume of transactions, where they're going. We can make some assumptions about, is this address illicit or is it not? Try doing that with the U.S. dollar economy. Unless you're making very, very significant assumptions, you will have a hard time getting to a data-backed percentage of illicit activity. If you're in a position where you're investigating these scams, you have so much more information available to you, both individually on an individual transaction and in an aggregate basis, because the more assets are involved in investigation, the more the law enforcement is going to pursue that investigation. Oh, accidentally let that go again. I was sitting here staring at my phone while I was uh, doing the show. I was looking at somebody on um, social media. <laughs> um, okay, in, in DAIXRP.com, here's what we're going to do. There's, I'm so overwhelmed with all this swell stuff and more stuff on crypto, XRP, whatever, that I'm going to stop here and, and we're going to go and I'm going to show the rest of it in DAIXRP.com.